Hello everyone, my name is Riley Dickens and I'm a consultant with Encryption Consulting. Today I'll be talking to you about data classification. So in this video I'll be talking about what data classification is, the different components of a data classification framework, and then I'll give you an example of a data classification model as well as the different roles and responsibilities that are a part of it and the clear success criteria you need to have a strong data classification framework. So most organizations have data classification policies in place, but many of them don't really affect the behavior of users since they don't really see it as important or it's not very clear to understand. And that's one of the biggest parts of creating data classification policies. Now, in order to use a data classification policy to change the way your users behave, it needs to be really clearly written and easy to understand and it should also be trained into your employees so that they really understand, okay, this is very important to our business and so I should really pay attention when I'm dealing with data. Now, not every single approach works for everyone. It really needs to be customized to the organization and it depends on the type of data they have as well. So there's several different types of data classification frameworks you can use, but the most common are the three tier, the four tier and the five tier models. And in our example later, I'll give you an example of a four tier model. Now organizations focused on personal information protection use the three or the four tier model, while organizations that focus on intellectual property protection will use a four or five tier model. Now let's take a look at the different components of a data classification framework. So when looking at the different components of a data classification framework, there's usually four different parts as you can see here. And the first part is the most important part, the data classification policy or scheme. Now this policy is extremely important because it defines the different levels and it describes in meaningful terms to the organization what those different levels mean and what types of data need to be classified in those levels. Now the second component of a data classification framework is the data labeling guidelines. And these focus on naming the data. What I mean by this is these guidelines focus on naming your files or folders in a specific way so that as soon as you look at the name, you know what classification level it is and whether or not you can use it because of that classification level. Additionally, automated tools like DLP systems can automatically detect those files and know what level they are and then protect them accordingly. Now let's take a look at our third component, the data handling guidelines. And these deal with how data is handled. Now this deals with how data is stored, how it is used, as well as how it is transferred to other users. These guidelines provide specific requirements needed to protect data at certain classification levels. Now our final component, the data classification directives, actually deal with classifying the data itself. And this is extremely important because users can use this to know if their data needs to be protected, at what level it needs to be classified, and then protect it accordingly. Additionally, this is extremely helpful for the technical teams that have the enforcing technical controls in place for data classification. Now let's take a look at an example data classification model. So here we have an example of a four-tier classification model, and we'll start from the bottom, and this is the public data. Now public data is open to all of the public, whether they're in the organization or not, or it's planning to be released to the public. So this is information that's really not that important to be protected. If it's taken, that's all right because it's already public. Now the second level is the business use level. And this level focuses on data that is used mostly in day-to-day -day operations. Now this is still sensitive information, so you have to have the right approvals in place to actually use this. But if it's lost or compromised, it's not that big of a deal. It wouldn't cause any huge issues in your organization. Now this level is data that's used every day and you do still need the proper approvals to use this data. Anyone off the street couldn't just access it, but it's not so sensitive that if you lost it, you would lose millions of dollars. Instead, it's just sensitive information within your company. Now our third level is the confidential level. And the confidential level is even more sensitive information, and this could actually cause big issues if it's lost. So confidential information that's stolen could cause a competitive advantage that you may have over a competitor to go away. And this is a big issue because this could be certain products or documentation that only certain people should see. And so this is why, much like the business use level, you still need the proper approvals and less people at this level have the confidential data access level. 
Now our final level is the restricted level, and this is the most restrictive. Now the restricted level has the most sensitive information, and this is where you may lose your competitive advantage in the market as well as millions of dollars to your organization. Now this causes issues with regulations and standards as well because you may come out of compliance if you lose this data, and that can cause some that can cause huge fees or potentially jail time. Now, like the confidential and business use levels, the restricted level does need approvals to use that data, but it is extremely small. There are very few people who can actually access restricted data. Now that we've seen what a four tier model looks like, let's take a look at some of the different roles you may have in a data classification framework. Now, the first role we'll take a look at is the data owners. And the data owners are extremely important because they actually own the data set and they're in charge of classifying their data based on business use as well as the sensitivity of the data itself. Now the data owners actually write the data classification directives for their certain data sets. And this is important because they're in charge of making sure that their data is stored properly as well as classified and identified properly. Now the second role we'll take a look at is data handlers. And as their name suggests, they actually handle the data. What they do is they make sure that all the practices are being followed properly based on the classification level of the data and that any access, transmission, or storage of the data is being properly followed. Now our third role in the data classification framework is the business unit sponsors. And these are actually extremely important members of the organization. What they do is work within their business unit to bring awareness to data classification and how important it is. And they make sure all the different employees throughout the business unit know how important data classification is and that they're following the proper protocol when classifying their data. Now this also deals with the different training that you might do for employees in a business unit. Now our final role is the information security team. And they make sure that all the technical controls are in place and enforced when dealing with data. So they're making sure that all restricted data can only be accessed by those individuals who actually need it for their business use. Now, finally, we'll take a look at the critical success criteria you should look for when designing your data classification framework. Now, when looking at the critical success factors, we really need to start with easy and simple goals. And these are important because, like I mentioned previously, when a user looks at data classification frameworks or any documentation relating to it, they need it to be very simple to understand so that they don't get overwhelmed and end up having to dig through multiple pages of documents. It should be very, very simple for anyone in the organization to access and use that information. Now, additionally, like the business unit sponsors do, you should make sure that training and awareness are in place for all employees. And this is important because if your employees don't know where they can get documentation for data classification, or if they don't know how to use that documentation properly, then they may run into some serious issues once they need to actually classify their information. And if public information is set as restricted information, that's not as big a deal, but if restricted information were to be classified as public information, that is a huge issue and that data could easily get out to anyone. Now in dealing with the different members of your organization, you need to make sure that roles and responsibilities are very clear so that people know who they need to go to for certain approvals or different parts of the data classification process. Additionally, clear data owners should be set because these data owners begin the data classification life cycle. Now, along with these other factors I mentioned, you should also establish a clear data life cycle management process. And this life cycle deals with the classification, the usage, as well as the retention and destruction of data in the enterprise. You should also have a data retention policy in place that should be approved by your legal department. Finally, there's the final success criteria, which is the most important, and that's actually understanding data classification principles. If you don't understand how your data classification process works, then you run into a lot of huge issues with data classification down the line. And that's the end of our video on data classification. If you'd like to learn more, please visit our website at www.encryptionconsulting.com. Thank you.